Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending April 22nd, 2022. I warned you last week that the market was probably warning us and uh, that's that's what the technicals were showing and so we were bumping up against the, uh, the, the 50 days and the 200 days uh, as resistance, heavy resistance levels on all the major indexes and so they indeed punched through as it looked like they might okay and then and then the the problem was was that they didn't punch through with sufficient volume behind them to hold and then chairman jay powell of the federal reserve uh, did an interview and a debate uh, in, a, in, a, in a discussion panel on cnbc during midweek and the longer that he talked the momentum dropped away and so the volume came in the real volume come in on the sell-off okay on Wednesday afternoon and then and then we uh, followed up again um, uh, I'm sorry it was Thursday it was Thursday afternoon and then it followed up again uh, today with uh, just continued sell-off because of the uh, discussion of, uh, of more of the Federal Reserve members that there would be in just a couple of weeks in May uh, 50, 50 uh, basis point uh, uh, rate hikes uh, in order to tame the inflation so uh, we had carryover inflation from last week that looked like it was going to carry into April and May and so maybe March wasn't the peak inflation there was enough in the channel for producer prices that indicated that it might carry forward so we've got now a super hawkish Fed and which begs the question I think Guy Adami on CNBC late yesterday uh, on, on Fast Money was was discussing Who's in control of this market? Okay, is it algos, is it algorithms, or or is it actually people here? Because the argument is very strongly made, in my view, that the um, uh, it, it, there's only been 25 bips uh, that has actually been raised on the short end of the curve. As long ago as November, the Fed has been signaling that it's going to do this, and as and, and over a couple of months ago, certainly at least six weeks ago, they were talking about how they were going to slough off. The long end of the curve, about ninety-five billion dollars a month, uh, that will just expire. I mean, obviously, the market, those bond markets, can't absorb that. There's no buyers for those long, uh, long uh, mortgage-backed securities there, so they're just going to slough off in seven-year tranches. Okay, every month as those as those just maturing and, and go off the balance sheet. So you've got you know almost a hundred billion a month on the long end. Uh, they're they're raising rates twenty-five basis points, but you already have. At the early part of this week, 287 on the 10-year, okay, and 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 there's only uh, at the, the beginning of the week there was only about 20 to uh, maybe 30 uh, basis point spread between the two and the 10. Now the two tens today's are are uh, you know 18 bips, so there's not any spread there, 18 basis points. All right, so there's there's not any spread, so you have a very flat uh, curve. Um, if the yields, if they've only actually raised 25 basis points and you have, you know, the yields just under 3%, then arguably, you know, 2.75 or so has already been baked into this thing. You know, earlier in the week, it was around 2.15 uh, at the end of last week and the beginning of this week. So just because he comes out and says 50 basis points in a couple of weeks maybe we'll do it again I mean, these guys have been saying this a couple of those guys have been saying that you know 75 basis points 100 basis points and that was over a month ago so it makes you wonder that you know uh, maybe guy is right uh, that that they have uh, robots out there that are recording these uh, you know digitized words they analyze the words they hear those scary things and it triggers the algos to sell off because humans uh, would arguably come in and say, wait a minute, we already knew that. This is not news. None of this was news. So where are we at in the business cycle? Well, um, uh, we have we have energy that is is still leading. It, it's, it's lost a lot of momentum over the last, uh, as of April the 18th, a lot of momentum that it did have. It was very high up uh, in the leading uh, sector of the chart, followed by utilities, staples, okay, real estate has been over there. Uh, healthcare materials so all of those things uh, on the one hand show a, a late stage business cycle and then on the other hand a few of the other uh, other things are still that are still uh, improving in in terms of momentum are showing an expanding manufacturing base so you know we're in a mature uh, end of the business cycle I think it's safe to say at best financials are weakening 
uh, consumer discretionary is lagging. Communication is trying to improve, but I, you know, I don't think that we can ever point to, I don't think the data ever shows any time that, that communications led into a, a, a market or, or an economic recovery. Uh, I, you know, that's <laughs> maybe, 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 uh, you know, with tech and communications and, and consumer discretionary, maybe, maybe that it changes out, which brings me to the point that we're not in, a, in, in the business of predicting. We, uh, you know, uh, express opinions based upon the data giving, but predictions, opinions, outlooks, and forecasts generally are the best laid uh, plans of mice and men. Uh, John and Kenneth Galbraith once famously said, and it was very true. He was a, he was a uh, uh, an economist, a well known economist, and a presidential advisor. And I'm quoting him: "The only function of economic forecasting is to make a tro astrology look respectable." So that's very good. We're in the business of investment management, and that's the management of risk, not the management of returns, according to Benjamin Graham, who has long been established as the Dean of Wall Street. So we take the market uh, as, as we find it, we analyze the data as it presents itself, and we manage accordingly, all right? And, um, and, and we, we are, are moving into an uh, arena where right now, arguably we're, in a, we're approaching a risk off situation, but by the same token, the data, shows that we are uh, moving with a lot of volatility, but still within a, a range bound, a very extended, extended uh, range bound uh, trade. Uh, we're just moving towards the middle, back end to the middle uh, and lower uh, of where we started out the year. We broke out of it for a couple of weeks. Now it's falling back down into it. Dramatic moves, two to 4% in total. The NASDAQ more. But again, we're less than 12% off record highs in the S&P 500. So uh, if you need help managing this, if you want to help discussing it, uh, let's talk about your risk tolerances. Let's talk about your goals and objectives. We'll build you a model that is going to fit you like a custom suit and is going to survive these choppy waters and be in place for the long term. We have a number of different alternative uh, uh, for investment styles and tastes and, and druthers. And a number of different uh, 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 different types of situations where we can uh, manage this, uh, uh, manage the downside risk, and grab uh, the upside when it presents itself, and move forward as we're in these very uh, uh, difficult markets and choppy waters as we move further and further away from the pandemic and into the future. The inflation is probably going to uh, is, is is going to be a factor here for a couple of more months and and we'll we'll just trade it as it goes until then and until next week in the meantime stay happy it's the key to longevity